This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, May the 14th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Matthias, the replacement apostle. The story of St. Matthias is utterly unexpected. After Judas betrays Jesus, he doesn't repent like Peter does, but despairs and hangs himself. And that leaves 11 apostles. Well, why is that a problem? Well, besides the Jews being very sensitive to symbolic numbers, it would seem that all of them are aware that they're supposed to be 12. That might have been something Jesus told them privately. It may be something that they just sense. Either way, Peter puts the issue to the group and sets the ground rules that the replacement apostle must have been with them since John the Baptist and have witnessed the resurrection. Just that throws a wrench in the works. Even a close reader of the Gospels is thinking, well, no one like that has been mentioned in the entire story of Jesus. But it turns out that this is yet another detail of the ministry of Jesus not contained in the Gospels. And because the Gospels were composed after Matthias was chosen, these details could have been written backward into the story. There's nothing to say that St. Matthew couldn't have said, by the way, there were a bunch of people walking around with us the entire time. But that story wasn't included. Anyway, there are two guys that everyone agrees are qualified and would be a good choice. Remember, there may be 20 guys who fit this bill. There may be 20 women who fit this bill too. But these two are nominated, Joseph the Just and Matthias. And yet another surprise, the apostles don't vote or pray to try to come to some kind of consensus. They cast lots. Well, what does that mean exactly? It's really impossible to tell. There were a number of common ways to cast lots back then, just as there are lots of ways to do that now. Today, we could flip a coin, draw straws, play evens and odds. The Jews had four or five of their own versions of these games that would have fit the phrase casting lots. The point is that they wanted to leave it to the Lord and not themselves. And after Matthias was chosen, he headed towards southwestern Turkey and was apparently good at preaching. He was martyred in the modern-day country of Georgia. Well, today in 1607, the first English colony in the New World was officially settled at Jamestown, VA. It was an uphill effort to be sure, but the Brits at the time knew how to colonize a foreign land. American history scholars might take umbrage with me saying it's the first English colony. Of course, Roanoke Island was settled 20 years earlier, but of course that colony failed. Jamestown survived, although that wasn't always assured. Even after the colony had become fully self-sufficient, Jamestown as a city almost dissolved away after a series of fires around the turn of the 17th century. That's when Williamsburg became the center of public life. In the middle of the 1700s, the city was all but abandoned. This was long before the modern obsession with preservation. Strangely, it was the Revolutionary War and really the war between the states that saved Jamestown as a place of residence. The history of the place is really worth looking into. Today is the birthday in 1936 of American singer Bobby Darin. While he was a heck of a songwriter, he's best remembered for his crystal clear voice and his jazz time improv style. He was one of the great crooners. Younger folks might think of him as the Michael Buble of his era. He was handsome and vivacious. His first hit was Splish Splash, but it was Beyond the Sea that he is best remembered for. His childhood was like something out of a Tim Burton movie, however. After he'd become successful, his mother told him that she was actually his grandmother and that his sister was his birth mother. This wasn't insanely rare, as unwed pregnancy was an intense social stigma of the day, but it threw the young man into a spiral of depression. His career all but died, which is why he's known primarily for his early successes. He did recover from his depression and return to the stage, but he died in the operating room from complications of an elective surgery when he was 37. Finally, today is Israel's Independence Day. It commemorates the Israeli Declaration of Independence in 1948. And so happy Independence Day to our Jewish friends in the Middle East. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.